This is Katya. And this is Kyra. And you're listening to Horrified Honeys. Let's get horrified. <laughs> Let's get spooky. Hello, honeys. We are going to be doing. Kara will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be doing a series on the podcast called You're Horrified, where we get to tell your stories. So if you meet some strange guy down an alley, strange ghost down an alley, strange demon down an alley. We love the demons. No, we don't. <laughs> Let us know. Yeah, send in your stories. You can change names if you want to stay anonymous or just let us know if you want to stay anonymous and we won't use names. You can just email them to us at horrifiedhoneys at gmail.com. At honeys with a U. <laughs> <laughs> honeys. Honeys. Bam, 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 bam. Who's going to go first? I will go first. Will you? I will. Okay. Okay, so this one's titled, I was definitely not dreaming. <gasps> Capital. No, I don't like that already. <laughs> <laughs> so, before I start, here's a few things about my house that you should know. About 15 years ago, myself and my family moved into my grandfather's house located in Paul, shortly after he had passed away. I never really knew my grandfather, but from what I could gather, he was extremely overprotective of his house. Mm. I'm not exactly sure how many generations of family have lived in the house, but to give you an idea of how old the property is, my grandfather used to tell us that he remembers a time when cars hadn't even been on the roads yet and houses were few and far apart. Ooh. Of all the experiences I've had in my house, there is one that to this day I cannot explain. It was summer and if you okay, know... Wait, can I interrupt you? Uh -huh. This makes me think of, you know that like, I think it was called Monster House? That was like that like children's horror movie. The animation thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's like his his wife is like, cemented in the ground and he's like yeah my property i don't i don't remember that okay <laughs> <laughs> it was summer and if you know paul you know it gets extremely hot i can 100 percent attest to that <laughs> so it isn't weird to see windows wide open in the middle of the night <laughs> not a good idea we used to have burglar bars on them but during this time we were in the process of repainting the house and so they had to be taken off temporarily oh, okay. My bed sat <laughs> under the window, and as usual, I would lay with my head across from the opening and allow the breeze to cool me off where I eventually fell asleep. At some point during the night, I was woken up, specifically... Specifically. Wow. <laughs> At some point during the night, I was woken up, specifically so, by a hand that was on my <gasps> head. I remember <laughs> lifting my own hand to make sure, and it was just that, a normal hand just gently running its fingers through my hair. I have goosebumps. No one said anything at this point, so I pulled my phone off from the dresser next to my bed to shine a light, thinking maybe it was my mother or sister, but nothing could have prepared me to see nothing. There was nothing there. Nobody. <laughs> I was alone in my room. But she felt the hand, like in she the was dark. hand on hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I looked out the window for any sign that somebody was in our yard, but there was nothing out of the ordinary. Oh no one gosh. could have gotten in without me hearing anything, even if I were asleep. I shut my window, put all the lights and TVs on, and just sat and... S no. Put all the lights and TV on, not all the TVs, <laughs> all the just TVs. one. And just sat in silence for the next few hours. I know for a fact what happened. It's still a clear memory in my head. Even the way the skin on the hand felt. No! I'm not sure what it was, something paranormal or a warning. Mm. Maybe someone, something was trying to tell me to close my window. Whatever it was, I was definitely not dreaming. I don't like that. But also, if oh, I touched a hand, I wouldn't grab my phone to look. I would immediately like flip around and be like, what the actual? Yeah. Wouldn't I you don't like... Know. You would, I don't know. I don't Because there was hand on hand. It's yeah, but like... you're also in the dark. So, like, even if you did turn around, you wouldn't see anything. So, she grabbed her phone for light to be like, hello? I mean, you'd see a little bit. No, I think she can, it was in the dark completely. <sighs> I don't like that. No. <gasps> but I have a similar one. 
this is crazy. <laughs> my, so my, I think I've told you this before, but my bed at home was like one of those princess beds with like all the oh, bars and the curly coos yes. and stuff. Um, one time I was lying in bed and sometimes my hair would like get caught in the bars or something and then I'd just like move my hair out of the way. Mm -hmm. And it did feel creepy sometimes, but it like wasn't a thing. Um, and then the one day it felt like something tugged on my hair and obviously you freak out like immediately but mm -hmm. I was like oh no it's just my bed and when I moved my hair none of it was caught in the bed and I was, oh, and then I didn't tell anyone about that and I was like years ago and then recently I was talking to Kayla my sister <laughs> um, and um, somehow it came up that the same thing happened to her that she oh, was no. lying in bed and oh, felt no. this like tug on her hair and she also just didn't tell anyone <laughs> Because you don't want to believe it's true. Yeah. But that's like, that's one thing and that's creepy as hell in itself. But to actually feel, feel a physical hand. hand is terrifying. Like, I want to know, was the hand cold? Was it like, I did they know. like t caress fingers? I don't have the answers for you. I mean, it was like caressing her hair. No. Like that's, I don't like it. I went on a camp that we had to like make our own tents. And there was rain dripping in my hair, but I thought it was a monkey playing in my hair. <laughs> so I never got up and <laughs> pretended I was still asleep. <laughs> Demon. <laughs> Demon. <laughs> okay, you go. Okay. So this is titled, The Creepy Story from the Wilsons. Miles Wilson is married to Anne Wilson. Anne's full name is actually Anthen Anthena. Oh, Athena? An Athena. No, but it's An Anthena. Anyway, okay. <laughs> followed by a very Greek surname, which I can't remember. This is important for later in the story. One day, Miles is driving home to drop his kids off, and he's driving a big bucky, and the back has one of those um, pull-over oh, yeah. cover things. It's not going to end well. <laughs> so the back is, like, closed. Um, anyway, he drops the kids off at home and gets back in his car and drives off into some Cape Town mountain spot to go for a run. He's driving up the mountain, so he's going through some uphills and windy turns. When he arrives at the spot, he gets out of the car and sees something weird on the back of his bucky, on top of the, like, pull-tight over thing. <laughs> the pull-tight cover thing. <laughs> Is that what it actually is? <laughs> yeah. Nice. What do you call it? It's like top pull and... I don't know. The pull-tight cover thing. Mm -hmm. He sees it's some kind of toy in a see-through packet, and he thinks maybe the kids forgot it in the back. So he throws it into the car and like goes off on his run. But he does wonder how that could have happened because he thought he would have noticed it in the back of the bucky before getting in the car. Even if he hadn't noticed it, he thought it definitely would have flown off the top of the pull tight mm. cover thing <laughs> when he was driving all up all the windy roads. When Miles got home... Windy roads. The windy... <laughs> I mean, like, oh, windy. Oh, yeah, maybe that's what you mean. Blow the, off. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> keep going. Yeah. <laughs> when Miles got home... He took the packet to his wife, Anne, and asked whether it was one of the kids' toys. Anne said that it wasn't, and she opened the packet. Anne Why, said, Anne? Don't open the packet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you would open the packet. Yeah, I'm curious. I don't open the packet. Anne said that when she opened the packet, all they could smell was a very strong old lady smell. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> she pulled out the toy, and everything was coated in a weird white powder. The toy was one of those kitties mirrors on a stand. <laughs> it had a big pink plastic border and a chunky stand to hold it upright. I can picture this exactly. Yeah. Underneath the stand of the mirror, Anne Wilson had been scratched into the plastic in some very scary horror movie type font. No. And she said she didn't attach it, but she said they showed me a pic of it. Terrifying. <laughs> can we get a picture? Maybe. Be really cool. Wait, and he's. 100% sure that was not in the car before he... No, it was like on the back of his bucky, on the cover tight pulley thing. Yeah. So then it was like on there. it would have fallen off. It would have fallen yeah. off 100%. Miles asked Anne if it was hers from when she was a kid. Maybe their housekeeper found it lying around. But Anne said she had never seen that mirror before. And Anne Wilson is her married name. So it can't have been from when she was so a was child. Like, oh. If it was hers from a child, then it would say a different name. Yeah. They landed up giving the packet to their housekeeper to take to Sangoma. And that's the end of the story. Wow. <laughs> what if it's like just a different Anne Wilson in the world? I mean, it's a pretty but common name. Why does it smell like old lady and have white powder? It was like in a Ziploc-y. Oh, I don't know. What's the white powder? 
I don't like it. I feel like they've been cursed. Like well, I mean, if they're doing okay now, then I suppose it's fine. Maybe not. We don't know these people. I want to get the picture though. That'd be yeah. very interesting. We, but that yeah. is creepy as heck. Creepy as heck. Okay, let me pick one to read. But you've read all of these, so I will not know what I'm reading. You will. Max. Here we go. When I was around eight years old, my brother was six, and we were both experiencing terrible nightmares. Not cool. As far as I remember, the nightmares were mainly about getting attacked by dangerous animals. That's horrible. Those are the yeah. worst. And it could be like a non-dangerous animal, and then you dream about it, and then it becomes dangerous to you in real I life. I dreamt. Don't judge me. I dreamt the one time that I was a hamster, and my best friend was a caterpillar, and I ate her. That's disturbing on many levels. Alrighty. Let's just breathe past that. Ow. It got so bad that the sleep deprivation started affecting our everyday lives. So my parents took us to the doctor, but they couldn't find anything physically wrong with us. Next, they took us to a therapist who also couldn't figure out what could be causing the nightmares. They tried a bunch of herbal remedies and other things to help us sleep, but nothing would stop the nightmares. That's so sad and so yeah, young. They're so young. And both of them at yeah, the same that's, time. That's one day, <laughs> one day they were venting to a colleague about the nightmares and everything they had tried without success. The colleague came from a traditional African background and suggested they contact a Sangoma and gave my parents a phone number. So now the Sangoma. The Sangoma came over one weekend and after spending the day with me and my brother, she said she knew how to get rid of the nightmares. I don't remember the details about why she thought we were experiencing nightmares. Something to do with restless spirits. <laughs> her, her cure involved leaving a full pot of water in the sunlight during the day and placing it under my bed at night while I slept. Interesting. My brother had to have his pot left out in the moonlight and placed under his bed the next night. After following the Sangoma's instructions, our nightmares disappeared. We still have no idea how or why this worked, but it did, and I'm super grateful. Oh. Interesting. I, I want to know why the water thing and the yeah. sun and the moon and all of that. Sangoma is like no things. Should we explain what a Sangoma is? Yeah. But is it from a specific... It's like a... What it's we would Zulu. Call, oh, it's Zulu. So it's... Yeah, it's kind of like a, a Zulu doctor. It's very traditional. Like they usually have a belief in like the ancestors and things like that. But they usually use to like diagnose people with things and help mm. them with things. The things. Probably not a great description, but... Um, so what people would call a witch doctor? Yeah, I think so. Um, but specific to Africa. And they've seen some things, man. Yeah, that's that's very scary, though, that they were both having... I wonder yeah. if they were having nightmares about... Oh, they were, the dangerous animals. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy stuff. Okay, next. Should I do one? Yeah. Okay. This is... Okay, this one's from my hometown. It was submitted on Reddit, and I don't have the person's actual name, so <laughs> here goes. I lived in a seriously haunted house in Jeffreys Bay for three years. Love it. Love it. Everyone in my family had an experience in there, including family guests who would stay there with us. It was huge and very old. Heavy poltergeist activity such as wine glasses being thrown and caps being knocked off of people's heads. Rude. That's so like, petty. Yeah. That's some petty shit. <laughs> My mother was even thrown off a bar stool <gasps> by a bright light that we all saw appear in a corner. What? Mm. <laughs> CDs would randomly start playing and skip in front of our eyes. Things would go missing and then reappear. One of our guests even opened her eyes in the middle of the night and saw an old lady's face staring at her. Nope. <laughs> nope. Dogs would act weird and bark at random corners when nothing was there. You know they know. I'm sorry, but a woman's face uh. at a guest house and you're just <laughs> trying to get some friggin' sleep. And I'm just breathing <gasps> over that like dogs see things. Yeah, I, I mean, I know dogs see things, that's for sure. I mean, most animals, I think. Yeah. Your cat stares at the front door. That was one time. <laughs> mm. Okay. My grandmother, who doesn't believe in ghosts, also had an experience in her room which terrified her to the degree that she won't talk about it. All we could get out of her was that it sounded like someone pushing a wheelbarrow on the roof. Oh no, <laughs> that's horrible. I want to know. 
I don't even, like, I can't picture what that would picture. I can't imagine what that would sound like. Yeah. That's so specific. So it yeah. must have been, like, really vivid. And then, I mean, maybe she saw something with that to know what the sound. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I personally saw what I believe is termed a shadow figure. The house had a long hallway and I, I was reading a book on a chair facing the hallway. I felt like someone was there, like the feeling you get when someone walks into the room. That's when I saw the shadow person. It was like black but also see-through. I could see the wall behind it, but it was also pixelated at the same time. Like if you scroll into an image too much and it blurs. I have hope. Oh, I've been hijacked before and oh, that experience yeah. was not nearly as terrifying as when I saw the shadow thing. Oh my god. It felt like pure evil. I felt a primal fear like I knew he wanted to do me harm. Oh, oh. But that's such a South African thing to be like, I've been hijacked. <laughs> <Casual. laughs> and this was worse than being hijacked. That's horrible. Both of those things are horrible. Yeah, um, I can't stop getting chills. I sat there for a few seconds or minutes in shock and then I immediately ran into my sister's room, which was next to mine, to check on her. She was fine, but as... <laughs> oh no. As I got to the doorway of my sister's room to go back to mine, the figure reappeared through a door at the end of the hallway and walked its way back. <gasps> walked? I don't want to know what it walked like. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, oh it, it gets better, girl. No. That's <laughs> enough for me. I'm good. <laughs> okay. Okay, go. This figure would emerge between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. And I would Why lock my... Why so long, though? <laughs> Just stand there for those three hours. No. Oh my goodness. And that's, I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so do you think just... it would just like appear within those times, like once, or would it just stay there for three I mean, hours? I need to know these things. Well, she says, and I would lock myself in my room to make sure I didn't go out at those hours. Wasn't <gasps> it in her room the first time though? No, it was in the hallway. Oh. She was like sitting in the hallway reading. <gasps> um, oh my God. And she says. My mother saw the same figure while she was in the bath. <gasps> no. No. I don't like that. That's when you're most vulnerable. Yeah. That's where all the horror movies take place. Yeah. It's like Freddy Krueger shit. Oof. Don't like that. Um, we all had terrible nightmares and eventually we all ended up sleeping in one room for safety. This was a six bedroom house and we Jeez. moved out as soon as we could. I've often thought about it through the years and see that it's been converted into an Airbnb. I wonder if the activity is still going on and that the guests get more than what they've paid for. <laughs> what a good way to end it. So good. That's the one you want to go visit, hey? Yeah. I would, so I I, would not sleep. <laughs> um, I spoke to my parents about this one and they said to me, Oh yeah, I think it's that really creepy house that we drove past and we said, That house looks haunted. <laughs> and then it got turned into a and b but do you think, like, do you know if they knocked it down completely and started again or they just revamped? No, they just revamped the house. But then it's definitely still there. Yeah. The, the figure yeah. man. The so we're gonna, gonna make a trip. The shadow man. I'll go for like a day trip. I won't stay over. <laughs> but then we won't see anything from 1am to 4am. Oh, I don't like it. Why can't you come in the daytime? What gets me, like when people don't do this, I'm like, what is wrong with you? That they all slept in the same room. Mm. Like, you have to. Yeah. Why would you be sleeping in different rooms when this is happening? No. No. <laughs> I, did not, I did not have fun there, but those were good stories. Those were good. Well done, peeps. Okay. Yeah. Done. Good job, sister. Peace out. <laughs> Just a reminder that you can submit your stories at horrifiedhoneys at gmail.com. Or there is also an Insta. There is. Horrified you can honey. DM us if that's easier or whatever's, whatever's, whatever's. It we can be hear. spoopy stories. It can be weird encounters with creepy peeps. Yeah. If you feel comfortable telling us, you can send them in and we will read them on the podcast. And tell us if you want us to say your name or not. Yeah. <laughs> that would be good. We did not check. <laughs> that's all for today, folks. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>